Here we are. It's the 20th of March. We passed the Ides of March, which was momentous in itself. And of course, the context is um, we're here all pretty much locked down and trying to stay safe in the grip of this uh, coronavirus pandemic. So it's um, an unprecedented time, I think, for many people here. Um, and we've never really seen the economy come to practically a stop. Uh, so uh, we're, we're all trying to kind of adjust to what that really means. Um, so I thought, Sally, maybe if you introduce yourself briefly, and then I'll do the same, and then we can get started on our chat. Of course, Rita. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here. And uh, I'm Sally Helgeson. I'm an author, a speaker, and a leadership coach. And for 30 years, I've focused primarily on women's leadership and building more inclusive organizations, both in my writing and my work. Uh, so I have lots of thoughts and insights about what kind of time that this is for women leaders uh, and for organizations in terms of building the opportunities here to build more inclusive cultures in a time of, of great stress. So wonderful to be here and thank you, Rita. Oh, thank you for making the time. It's always, it's always a pleasure. Uh, so I'm Rita McGrath. I'm a professor at Columbia Business School, and my main areas of focus are at the intersection between strategy and innovation. But a little kind of side project of mine, which Sally was hugely influential in shaping, uh, is that I direct our executive leadership program for women. It's called Women in Leadership. Uh, and it's really about two things. One is how can women be their own best advocates, change what, they're, what is in their mm -hmm. control, but more importantly, how can they be change agents for their organizations to make the organizations more uh, inclusive and more open to the influence of women, which a mountain of research suggests is absolutely critical to high performance, that, that when women are not just in the room, but actually listen to and are able to participate. Yeah that it makes such a, a huge difference. So I thought to, to kick things off, Sally, um, you said something to me that just really struck with, stuck with me and it even made it into my most recent book, which is about strategic inflection points, which is, you, you know, you've been studying women's leadership for, forever, um, but what we've traditionally thought of as women's leadership we're now recognizing is really important for leaders in general. So I'd, I'd love it if you could maybe expand on that thought. It's been a fascinating process to watch, Rita, over the last 30 years as um, demographics, technology, and the nature of the economy, the emphasis on knowledge and innovation, have changed what our understanding is of what constitutes excellence in leadership. Uh, and now organizations that are well run or ahead of the curve are all looking for leaders who can inspire trust, uh, facilitate engagement of employees so that they can really bring their hearts and minds and innovative skills, uh, qualities like listening and empathy and the ability to directly and clearly communicate with people have become ever more important. Um, and just the recognition that uh, an inclusive culture is required to manage a diverse workforce, which is the reality. You know, diversity and inclusion have gotten paired, but, but in, diversity is really the reality of our workforce and inclusion is the, the means by which it can be led. So what's been fascinating, um, I wrote a book in 1990 called The Female Advantage, Women's I Ways. Have right over here in my library. <laughs> And, um, and sort of enumerated, looked at these skills as representing women's leadership at its best. Mm -hmm. And at the time, that was always dismissed as those are soft skills. Those aren't leadership skills. And today, um, you know, what, ha what were formerly seen as soft skills have become leadership skills. And I think we've underplayed the role that women have played in this in terms of shifting the strategy of how organizations um, motivate and engage uh, their employees and innovate in the world. So it's been a fascinating thing to watch. My old friend Tom Peters always says, what was hard has become soft and what was soft has become hard. And I think that's uh, the, really, the realization of this, that the soft skills are really the hard skills and they're the ones that organizations need now and will need more than ever going forward. 